this is Kozlowski come up. I'm pleased to nominate Susan Kozlowski for the Triple H Award. Mrs. Kozlowski has been a teacher aide in the district since 2018, starting in the elementary school, and has recently served, or has, has most recently served, as a dedicated member to the Life Skills Room uh, just down the hall in Ms. Ebling's class, and is serving as well, sorry, serving her and her students as well. Mrs. Ebling would say that Sue is not simply a teacher's aide. She's a shining example of what dedication and selflessness within the classroom looks like. Sue's unwavering willingness to help others is truly remarkable. She consistently goes above and beyond in her responsibilities, offering support and assistance to both students and teachers alike. When Mr. Adams or I reach out for volunteers or someone to work a sporting event, detention, or anything else, Sue is one of the one person who is most likely to step up. Whether it's lending a helping hand in classroom activities, the Hug -a -mug -a Cafe cart, uh, classroom outings, or providing one-on-one -on -one support to struggling students, her commitment to serving others is unparalleled. What sets Sue's apart is her unwavering focus to the needs of students. She possesses a natural ability connect with her, to connect with their students on many levels, creating an environment where they feel, where every individual feels seen, heard, and valued. Sue recognizes that each student is unique, has strengths and challenges that she can help tailor her supports to fit their needs. However, it's not only within the confines of the classroom that Sue demonstrates her exceptional qual qualities. She's an active participant in extracurricular activities, organize events, or helps organize events for clubs and different things, and promotes a sense of community and inclusion. inclusion. Her outgoing nature extends beyond the classroom walls as she builds her strong relationships with students, parents, and the community. Her unwavering, her unwavering willingness to help and dedicate herself to her students is an invaluable asset to Ms. Ebling's classroom. She has left an indelible mark on the lives of the students and has become an integral part to our school. When Ms. Ebeling was asked to speak about Mrs. K, she summed it up, I wouldn't be able to do my job without her. Together, we work as a team to tackle any obstacles that come our way in our classroom as a family. Mrs. Kozlowski is a consummate professional who we're truly grateful to have in our schools, and I'm happy to present to her the Triple H Award. Her sister also had nice things to say, but it didn't make it up. <laughs> yeah, we did cut. It wasn't perfect. <laughs> and my final Hollis, uh, Holland's Highest Honors Award uh, goes to Mrs. Walagora. So if you could come up. So I'm pleased to share with several of her colleagues the nomination for a of Angela Walgora to the Triple H Award. Mrs. Walgora is a member of the English department, or has been a member of the English department for almost a decade. Over the years, Angie has taught nearly every English course that we have offered at some point or another. She is an integral part to the high school family and has continuously, or continuously has students at the forefront of every decision. One of the defining qualities of Angela is her collegiality in all aspects of her, her professional life. She understands the power of collaboration and actively seeks, seeks opportunities to work with her colleagues, both within the English department and across different content areas. Just recently, I was approached by her and Mr. Carr to team up on an elective for next year, which helps students build on the abilities to research, collaborate, and create document, documentaries, especially one that would focus on the resiliency of the town of Holland and that of the uh, Holland Central School District during the pandemic. Uh, Angela has continually come to me with new ideas and emerging trends that she finds valuable for her students. She has been at the forefront of understanding the powers of AI within the classroom and has worked to create ways to positively incorporate them while helping kind of protect our kids from them. These instances highlight her collaborative and collegial approach to education. And by fostering this collaboration, she has created a network of support and shared knowledge that benefits not only her students, but the entire teaching community. She serves as a mentor and guide, always ready to lend a helping hand and share their, share her ex, share their expertise amongst the community. Uh, one of her colleagues, Sarah Crow, summed it up as, Angie is so genuinely, genuinely supportive of her colleagues and her students every single day. She is such a positive professional and such a joy to work with. What sets her apart, though, is her innovative, student-focused approach. She recognizes that education is not a one-size-fit-all, but rather an opportunity to nurture diverse talents and abilities with in their classrooms. 
She seamlessly tailors her teaching methods to meet the needs of individuals of all students, creating an inclusive, engaging environments. Through her unwavering, unwavering commitment, I, must, I like that word, I guess it like a dozen times. <laughs> um, her unwavering commitment to student growth, she has instilled a passion for learning and transcends the boundaries of the classroom. A defining example happened this year when she came to me with an idea for a senior English elective, professional communications. While it doesn't sound like much from the title, the course is everything that students have needed. It's one of the most beneficial, beneficial courses that they have said they have taken. She's given them the opportunity to share in the direction of the course by choosing topics such as simple thank you notes, formal letters, resumes, interview skills, and then into things that they'll need in the rest of their life, like banking and other helpful topics. I think you guys did sewing. He's coming up. Um, something that I could use as well. Uh, students value this course, and it is evident by the praise they give Mrs. Walgora and the request for the same course next year. Furthermore, her student center approach extends beyond the classroom as a junior class advisor post-prom co-planner and the co, I'm sorry, I need a drink more. Um, and as the post-prom co-planner, Angie has put 100% effort into her students and everything with their experiences and opportunities. This year, she was able to encourage to think outside, encourage students to think outside the box when it comes to fundraising and volunteer experiences, as well as worked above and beyond um, with Mrs. White to create a safe place for students to enjoy after prom. And you, she also this year was able to raise over $8,000 in donations and food and prizes for that amazing event, uh, which students also enjoyed. When given the opportunity, Angie is always willing to help support her colleagues and students. She is the epitome of a great teacher, and her collaborative spirit, innovative teaching methods, and unwavering commitment to student success makes her a true inspiration to the school. It's for these reasons that I would like to present to you the Triple H Award. Get a picture right here. <laughs> I would like to present the first Triple H award to Anita Troutwine, Holland's interim food service director. Okay. Anita has been with us since May 11, 2022. When our former food service director abruptly resigned, I placed a desperate call to the director at Penton, Kim Roll who I worked with for eight years previously, to ask her if she knew of any retirees who could help us out until the end of the 2021 school year. Kim highly recommended Anita, who had retired from Alden Central School District the prior year. I called Anita and asked her if she would help out, and thankfully she agreed. As the school was ending, we had to do our inventory and get ready for our year-end audit. Anita was a lifesaver. Her 30 plus years experience in child nutrition made the transition to a new director seamless. I then asked her if she would consider working for Helen the next school year. The state retirement earnings cap was waived so that Anita could work for us and still collect her pension. Um, thankfully, she agreed. Anita immediately developed wonderful working relationships with the food service staff in all three buildings. Everyone told me that Anita was like a breath of fresh air. We are no longer replacing food service staff every month because of her kind, collaborative, and approachable management style. This school has been truly outstanding because of Anita's leadership. The staff really enjoys working with her. Anita has also increased participation and reduced expenses, with, which both help the department to become self-sustaining. She uses her expertise in ordering food and developing menus that help increase sales. She's tried new menu items and offered taste testings to learn what students like and are willing to purchase. We also recently had a child nutrition audit. That was fun. <laughs> Which came back clean with no findings. Students are happy, staff is happy, and I'm thrilled to have Anita Troutwine running our food service department. I will miss her as she again retires and begins next school year as a full-time grandma. 
please join me in honoring Anita with the Triple H Award. Thank you. And then I also have some cards made for you um, by the students in the elementary building. <laughs> and here is your certificate. Oh, it's Thank you very much. You're welcome. You can have a seat. I'd like to present the next Triple H Award to Suzanne DiMartino, Transportation Director for Holland. <laughs> Suzanne has been with the district since February 18, 2020. Within just a few weeks of joining Holland, COVID hit in March of 2020. Everything Suzanne learned in those initial weeks went out the window as she had, to, she had to pivot from learning our routes, our drivers, our students, to coordinating the delivery of meals to Holland families. This continued throughout her first summer. She then had to schedule routes for elementary and special ed students who were here in person all day during the 2021 school year, and then develop routes for our middle and high school students who were hybrid, learning remotely and at, and at school, attending on purple and gold days. This meant building all new routes from scratch while accommodating social distancing requirements. She had to provide additional training as well as buses had to be sanitized between each run. Also during this time, Suzanne's office was displaced due to the bus garage remodel. And she worked out of a classroom in the elementary building all through the COVID shutdown. I don't think anyone has had a crazier start to a career than Suzanne. Suzanne continues to work tirelessly tirelessly due to driver shortages, medical leaves, and daily absences. She routinely works 12-hour days from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. as she covers to drive a bus or be a bus attendant. Her work ethic is second to none. The relationships between her and her drivers and attendants are excellent. Suzanne is a fair and approachable supervisor. As a leader, she readily adapts to, to ever-changing circumstances and makes thoughtful decision, decisions to best serve students and the district. She also keeps up on her own professional development as she attends local transportation director meetings and conferences. It is a pleasure to work with Suzanne. Please join me in honoring Suzanne with the Triple H Award. I also have the Thank you for getting us home safely and a bunch of notes from the elementary students. And here's your certificate. You're welcome. Good evening, everybody. Uh, the 2023 Triple H Awards are given out for the Buildings and Grounds Department is from Ms. Rose Raymond. Choosing this award can be a daunting task in any department in any group because you always look for the best and pull out the best in everybody and want to put it all together. And it was very easily done uh, when I was asked to pull uh, this together for, for Rose. Um, Rose has been a part of the, uh, she certainly deserves this recognition. Rose has been a part of the Holland community now for 35 years and has been employed with our Holland district since January of 2015. In the past, Rose worked at Wegmans as an assistant manager, taking care of orders and deliveries. Moving forward in her career, Rose became an office manager and trainer for a cleaning service, spending 30 years training, training folks, as Rose would say, new victims. <laughs> <laughs> on proper techniques, procedures, and customer service etiquette. Rose came to Holland Schools with all the skill sets that our B&G team and campus required, and then some. Rose starts her day very early, generally five-ish in the morning, if not sooner, and thrives on the fact that she has everything ready for the doors to open for our staff and students. She greets everyone with a smile and a warming hello and continues on with her chop-chop speed and gait. As mentioned before, Rose is a teacher as well. Rose has graciously accepted the task of training and refreshing our new B&G staff. She's very personable, very fun, approachable, and willing to help anyone with any task or question. 
giving our new folks the foundations that are needed. Rose cares about her job and does it extremely well. She cares about how we present and represent as a team and district and cares about our students and staff's needs. Rose works hard every single day to provide a clean, safe, healthy, and inviting learning environment for all of us and all of our students. She is the foundation of our BNG team and a true blessing to our district. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Hans BNG Triple H Award, Mrs. Ro Ramacher. So when I was asked to present uh, Triple H Awards, I struggled with the fact that I had to pick out of my group. Um, the transportation department works very hard together as a team. So I struggled to identify just a few of them because I believe they all deserve to be recognized. So when I got to thinking about this, I picked the group that immediately helps me do my job better. I'm going to start with the mechanics. If I could ask both of them to come up, Mike Christ and Jason Cohn. So these guys work together in the bus garage, keeping our buses safe. We have 25 buses in the fleet, not to mention a couple vehicles and Scott's uh, vehicles lawnmowers, tractors, um, plow trucks. So they keep everything running and moving um, all while doing bus driving duty. Um, for the last three years here as transportation supervisor, these guys have had 100% zero defects on DOT safety inspections. Uh, some days they spend more time behind the wheel than under the hood. So that's a great accomplishment. I'll start with Jason. Jason started with the district in early of 2019. Um, he was experienced in diesel mechanic working at other school districts. Um, he is my go-to guy in the morning. Uh, him and I are there, we open the building. And if I'm short a driver, Jason's it. So very often you'll see uh, Jason driving in the morning. He is familiar with most every run, um, picking up students and not missing many in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> but Jason um, has been very patient with me, um, probably a little di bit different atmosphere when I walk in the garage and I complain about it not being clean and neat. And he's like, it's a garage. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, he works through some of my idiosyncrasies um, and, and is uh, very quick to help me understand the mechanics aspect. Very uh, oftentimes I'll be under the bus with him and have him show me things that are broken or things that need to be fixed so I could get a better understanding of um, the mechanic side of my job. So I'm very honored to uh, give this to Jason Cohn for all his help he does uh, in the bus garage. The next mechanic is Mike Christ. Mike is very new to us. He started in August of 2021. He came from private industry, uh, not familiar working with the school district at all. He was familiar with DOT inspection and diesel mechanics. But working in a school district is a completely di different atmosphere. Um, we pushed Mike to get his CDL, which in its own right is, is very trying and demanding to go through that testing and to acquire CDL license and the ability to transport students. Um, a little nudging we got him to do that and now now Mike has become another reliable sub for us. Um, he's, he is great in the afternoon, um, picking up a lot of times, uh, athletic shuttles that I don't have a driver to cover. He's my go-to guy to, 
to run between buildings or run to East Aurora or to do quick shuttles down to Rolling Hills. So um, he's he's very important in, in getting afternoons covered. Um, both these guys, we we would not be able to get runs covered without the help of our mechanics. And I, I have to say a lot of districts don't require their mechanics to drive. So I appreciate the fact that these guys are here and able to drive for us. So I'd like to uh, give this, this Triple H award to Mike Chris for the hard work he's done this last two years. Okay, you gotta stay down here. Sorry. <laughs> Leave it to transportation to do things a little different. <laughs> so the next person I'd like to call down and recognize is Sharon Tucker. So Sharon works in the office as clerical. She's also dispatched. Sharon's been with the district for 20 years. She has a lot of experience in the district. Um, she's been in transportation for the last 10 or so. And I got to tell you, when I first started, she was like my right-hand man. I mean, she still is woman, sorry. But I depend on Sharon a lot to, to just enlighten me on how the transportation department operates how a Holland operates. Um, like Christine said, my first six months here was absolutely crazy and there was nothing normal about it. And Sharon kept me, um, kept me in the right direction and helped me along that path of learning Holland and becoming familiar with all our procedures and policies and routes. Um, during that time, I implemented a new routing system, which Sharon helped me get through. We worked together, learned that together. We we built routes together. Um, gosh, she does so much. I, I'd be here all afternoon if I, I listed everything. But some of the things, like she is my sole dispatcher in the afternoon. Um, at oftentimes, too, if I'm short attendance, I have to pull her out of the office and she'll ride the bus to be a bus attendant. Um, she's very tenacious when I have too many tasks and I give her something to do, she'll, she'll get it done. And I know if I hand it off to Sharon that I don't have to even think about that again, that she'll get it done for me. Um, she also works in athletics. So that direct line with athletics is very helpful for transportation with busing. So that that's been pretty efficient here at Holland working well with Matt, with Sharon as a lia liaison between the two of us. And just, you know, having her there, our offices, we have the open door between us. Um, she's helped me keep my sanity in some crazy times. Um, she's probably heard a lot of uh, maybe too many not nice words come out of my mouth at some crazy times. But she's tolerated a lot. Uh, we work well together, and I honestly don't know what I would do if Sharon wasn't in the office to help me with all all the jobs that that go along with you know not being in there often because I'm on a bus or something like that. So I'm very honored to give this Triple H award to Sharon Tucker. The last Triple H award I have today is for Bob Ersting. Bob. Bob has the absolute toughest job in the district. He is a sub bus driver. Um, oftentimes, um, Bob comes in and starts work and has no idea what he's gonna be doing for that day. So, the mornings, it's dark, um, doesn't know the route, although Bob is very familiar with all the routes because he pretty much works every day for us, driving whatever I have to, to need to get filled. Um, he is retired masonry. Um, he's been with the district since um, for two years now, four. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. 
Retired <laughs> wife. <laughs> yeah. But we all know how students act when they have a sub. Imagine being a sub bus driver with all your students behind you driving a 29,000 pound vehicle down the road. So it's not an easy job. Um, he does a great job with it. I could put him on any run. I know he'll get kids picked up. I'll know he'll find his way back. Um, Bob is very dedicated. Like I said, he's there every day. He's willing to help, willing to jump on any run, very flexible. He's often changed vacations for me, knowing that I, I am short drivers. Um, he's very accommodating. He always comes in with a smile. We are very lucky to have Bob here in his second retirement. Um, I'm very honored, uh-huh, 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 to give <laughs> Bob this Triple H award. Congratulations to all of our Triple H uh, award winners. Uh, it's a pleasure when we when we brought this back. I mean, this is really what the district is all about. You know, Angie and Suzanne and Susan Kozlowski, the students, Ivy and, and Seth, Anita and Suzanne. Transportation doesn't get recognized till something my students picked up late or, or, or too early. Um, they never get recognized. I couldn't tell you on the board, when's the last time we got a call about transportation? And we used to get them at the beginning of every school year, we would get them many, many. And, you know, it's one of those uh, not heard, not uh, represented. So the, the job that you've done in the most trying times, you know, one, not even one month, you, you know, we had to go to virtual and, and and now we had to feed you know our our students uh, so the, the job that you did and with um with the food service i mean every meeting we were we were having turnover and staff until anita came on and now that is uh just turned completely around um you know the the job that the, the entire staff has done is is unbelievable buildings and grounds i i, I when we put this together for board planning, I'm like, I wish we could just call everybody up because the job that uh, every department has done has been outstanding and we uh, we like to recognize that. Thank you. Presentation of the budget results. Okay, so uh, our proposition one, the 23-24 budget was for $22,550,025, and that passed um, $295 to $137. Proposition two was the purchase of fleet vehicles for $379,520, and that passed $323 to $110. And then our board member election, there were two seats for five-year terms ending um, June 30th, 2028, and our new board member next to me, Andrew Stang, got the most votes, 280. Paula Leach, who um, will come back on the board July 1st, got 236, and then Michelle Weaver got 230. What I did attach um, is a history of budget votes, so you can keep this going, um, and this gives you some really good information. Um, the total number of voters, 440 this year. Um, we haven't had that since um, 1617, that many voters. So it was nice to have a lot of people come out and vote this year. And our percentages of passing were also very impressive. So I just want to thank the Holland community for coming out and voting and congratulate Andrew on his appointment. Correspondence. Uh, we got uh, some postcards again. Um, privilege of the floor. Privilege of the floor. Administrators and supervisors reports. 
Good evening. So since the last time I've seen you, we've officially completed New York State Assessment. I am proud to continue to share that third and fourth grade, we had 100% participation in both content areas. So the festival was fun for everyone. Our students were absolutely bursting with pride for our spirit parade. We had a great turnout. Um, and also another big thank you to Kiwanis for their support. And they always donate juice boxes to our kids after that walk that they very much appreciate. Our makerspace is open. And just last week, every student had the chance to participate in their first challenge. They broke up in small groups and they were placed with a scenario that they were in the airport running to make their flight to Disney. And they dropped their keys, their cell phone and their boarding pass in a sewer grate. And the only thing they had to get those items out was the trash can next to them. So students worked together to grab it was like rubber bands and paper clips and all these different items to fish these items out. And they worked so quickly and collaboratively. It was fantastic. They all walked home with a sticker on their chest that said, ask me about what I did in the makerspace today. And we hope that that generated some really thoughtful conversation around the dinner table. Um, on the tales of Christine's presentation, I'm happy to announce we had 66 HOB students go to the community center and vote with their families. This year, we tried a spirit day vote for our elementary school and beach day one. That will be our final spirit day on June 20th. Students are excited about that. Uh, we are ready to move forward our planning for Summer Academy with our partnership with Boys and Girls Club. We currently have 33 students enrolled in that program and 17 of them are taking advantage of the after program um, throughout the rest of the day at the club. And that goes from July 10th until August 10th. Families can still enroll. It's still not too late. Um, our UPK update, we have 35 students enrolled for our full day program, resulting in one class at 17, one at 18, and eight enrolled for our half day program. We are working on um, our enrollment letters and those will go out and hit mailboxes first week of June. And then lastly, I won't see you again until all the fun is over in terms of preparing for our end of year events. So we are busy, busy, busy. I'm hoping that you can come out and join us for some of those celebrations. Any questions for me? Thank you. Thank you. All right, news from middle school. Uh, we are in the uh, year end phases of uh, looking at things like summer academy and uh, students for that sort of thing. And I will say that uh, the conversations around that, there's a lot less this year in terms of kids being required, because as I've been highlighting throughout the year, our failure rates have been dropping pretty precipitously, um, which is pretty awesome. Um, may make for a smaller summer academy, but that's that's maybe a good thing. Um, some good stuff going on in the building uh, last week's and this week. Uh, PTO book fair going on right now. Fifth and sixth grade fun night is around the corner next Friday evening. They got some cool stuff cooked up for that. Uh, we got some field trips happening because the weather's obviously good again. Sixth grade's heading to Canal Side and on the history bus tour, which was a hit last year. Uh, fifth grade will be going on Miss Buffalo, also learning about some history down there. And uh, last, I'm going to ask Kelly to join me up here because this is news that's not just the middle school, but it's also the elementary. Oh, she left. <laughs> wow. Well, then I'm just going to take credit for it. <laughs> um, this is kind of a, a neat thing that uh, we found in a newspaper in Syracuse a couple of weeks ago um, regarding our uh, success during COVID. And I'm going to start with a little bit of trivia here. Um, so to set the stage, though, so obviously the COVID years are tough. We know all that. A lot of kids miss school, shortened classes, lots of stress. So academic results should probably be down, right? This is kind of the theory. So let me start out with some trivia. Um, how many school districts do you think there are in our county? Anybody know? At least... At least that we got data for, I think it was 26 in this, and maybe a few more than that, but at least 26. And out of those schools, how many do you think showed growth on their state math assessments over the three years of COVID? Two. And of those two, who do you think was number one in the county for growth on three through eight math tests during COVID? Holland, Holland Central School District. But wait, there's more. Uh, I believe there's about 800 school districts in New York State. Um, they only had data for it was like 549 of them. Of those 549, how many schools do you think actually showed growth on math during COVID? About 80. And of those 80 schools, I am proud to say that Holland three through eight was number eight in, in all of New York State in terms of growth on math assessments during COVID, which I think is pretty awesome. I want to congratulate, obviously, our math teachers and our students. Um, I think it speaks to the dedication and work ethic there. And also, I think that that's a 
a nice piece that shows all the commitment we had to getting students in more than other places. I think it did pay off in terms of that, uh, as well as in the aftermath. So it's some pretty awesome news mm -hmm. I'd like to share. Uh, so yeah, not just the middle school, also third and fourth grade with Kelly. So some credit there as well. Thank you. Hello again. Hello. <laughs> um, our first news, our senior trip was a huge success. The kids came back. Um, very well rested, they'll tell you, but they were extremely tired today when they came back. Um, many of them, I said, just wait till you have kids, and then it'll, it'll feel just the same. <laughs> um, but they had a great time. Um, it was an amazing trip for everybody. Uh, the first day, actually, they a lot of them were so tired, they didn't even want to watch the fireworks. They wanted to just go back to the hotel and sleep, so they it was a good trip for them. Um, and next year, Miss Justinger said that they need to start a workout regimen a couple, day, a couple weeks before <laughs> where they learn how to walk a couple miles a day so they can get used to it. Um, but they had a great time. The weather was amazing. Um, it did rain the one night, but you know, it was 90 degrees. So, ooh, ooh. Um, but they had a great time. Um, I already talked about the scholastic achievement and a, a dinner. Congratulations again to those top three seniors. It's an amazing event. Um, it is the end of the year. I haven't, I was absent from the last board meeting because my wife had a baby. Um, and baby's doing well, already a month old. Um, but Everything we're doing in May is uh, ending up for the end of the year and it's coming really quickly. The high school just has uh, about three weeks left. We end on the 13th and then Regents exams begin. So we're going really quickly with that. Uh, we're getting set up for graduation on the 24th at 11 a.m. Uh, before that, we'll still have our academic awards night, which is next Thursday, which we'll, on we'll have a National Honor Society induction. Um, and then we'll have the academic awards. So it's gonna be a busy couple of weeks. Uh, we did finish up our AP exams and a big thank you to Deb Kozlowski for putting all that together. She really, when I was out, took took over for that entire thing, um, organized everything, cracked it all, sent it all back. It was amazing. So thank her. So thank you for her. Um, it seems like it was forever ago, but the prom happened earlier in the month um, on the first weekend in May. It was an amazing event. It started off uh, in the school day. Deputy Dreyer and I were able to put together a pre-prom demonstration. Um, which we hope to continue every other year or so. We had over 30 first responders here uh, and they did a car accident recreate, re, re, reenactment. Um, they were able to bring, we had Mercy Flight land in the back of the school. The kids thought, you know, everything was amazing. They had um, kids pretending they were in a car accident. They used the jaws of life to cut them out of the car. It was a, a, a huge scene um, that was put on for our kids to show them just the dangers of drunk driving, not wearing seatbelts and different things. So that was great right before prom. Um, prom was an amazing success. Big thank you to everyone, especially Rachel Ebling, who uh, put that all together for that, and all the chaperones who showed up. Um, even Mr. Lawton, he was there. He didn't dance this year, but he was still there. Um, one song? Not one song. Okay. Um, and then post-prom, again, was a huge success. We had huge donations and everything uh, for that. Um, some recent news of a recent graduate, our valedictorian last year, Randall Wright, he finished his first year at Elmira, I believe, and he's already been accepted into early acceptance into medical school through LECOM. So as a freshman, he's got a, a gate opened right into medical school. So that's pretty amazing for him. Um, uh, congratulations to the Queens pageant contestants and everyone, uh, the winner, especially a uh, big thank you to Kiwanis for putting that on. I did spend some time in the dunk tank. It happened to be right when Queen's Pageant was starting, so I didn't get dunked that often, but it was poor timing in my part, I guess, um, or good timing. Um, <laughs> and for hiring news, we're just finishing up our chemistry and physics hiring, and we do have someone lined up for technology for next year, so we'll have a full tech team. Um, it is early still, but September's a long way away, but we have someone lined up for that, so we'll have a full tech teacher in high school and in the middle school. That's all I have. Any questions for me? Watch thank you. you over. All right. Thank you. So I'm happy to announce that um, Mr. Jared Wangland started today. He's our new special education teacher over at our elementary school. And his collaborating teachers today had a meet and greet with the students, and the students were excited to meet him. Um, if you remember from our last board meeting, um, he he had or I had disclosed that he student taught here back during actually COVID and so we're so happy to just have him back in the building he's excited to be here um so that was that was a great start to the kids Monday today um our annual review season is winding down but that just leads to the next stages of planning 
So we're starting to plan already for next school year. That planning is starting at the elementary school. Uh, Kelly and I and the department chair have um, already have some scheduled meetings to start that planning for next school year. And then that's going to continue into our middle school and our high school. And then all that planning continues throughout the summer. So we're already starting that process as everything's winding down. Um, an update on um, the just from our Office of Pupil Personnel. Our focus this year was really building capacity across the districts in special education and alike. So providing faculty in all three buildings with relevant information and updates it, on various topics from the PPS department. So every month, or I'm sorry, not every month, every other month, I would prevent, present at building faculty meetings. And I would present on topics, whether it was updates just on meetings and locations and office hours from gathering information from our, our teachers through a note catcher. What do they want to know about? What are the topics that they want to hear about? Um, what are some questions that they have? Just an ongoing live document. Um, and with that information, we would, I would present on topics such as the differences and similarities between 504s and IEPs. Um, what, what are the different types of CSE meetings? What are the members' roles? What are the roles of committee members? What are the structures of those meetings? They're just some of those topics that we're talking about during those presentations. So over this next month, um, which I had already started at the elementary faculty meeting or uh, faculty building, meeting, collecting feedback on these presentations in order to enhance this for next school year. So we look, we'll be looking to continue this and build that capacity, not only with our faculty members, but then also looking to expand to, you know, our aides next school year. Any questions for me? Thank you. Um, I just want to thank Anita and Pam Patterson. They are working with me on a Healthy Meals Initiatives grant. The grant is due the 25th. Um, we're still waiting for a couple quotes on serving lines for the buildings, um, but everything else is done. We're going to be, if we get the grant, we'll be doing hydroponics in the, the classroom. So Pam will um, incorporate that into her science classes. We have partnerships with Cornell Cooperative and also Erie County Soil and Water. So it, we can write for up to $150,000. Um, hopeful, you know, we don't have a, a poverty rate that lets us apply for the child nutrition grants. You have to be a um, high poverty district. So we never get to get that equipment. It's the same districts over and over who, who get that funding. So I am very hopeful that this would be an exciting thing. We, um, We'll use um, local um, food sources to purchase from, and Cornell will help us with that. Also, you know, use those fruits, vegetables, herbs in the meal planning at, um, in the cafeteria. So hopefully we'll get it. We'll know it soon. So, you know, the grants due May 25th, and I think they let you know in July so you could start the school year off. So... On Friday, Eric joined, I'm sorry, Mr. Lawton joined sorry. me um, at um, ASBO. Um, the, it's my last um, duty as president of Western New York ASBO. And we got to give a scholarship to a Holland student. So I selected Mason Perigo. So she got a $1,000 scholarship from Western New York ASBO. And we also um, nominated a Western New York uh, or I'm sorry, Western uh, School Business Official of the Year to a former Holland employee, Joanne George, who gave the best speech ever. It was great. That's all. Thank you. Yeah, Joanne actually quoted a famous philosopher, <laughs> Snoop Dogg, in her, in her acceptance speech. It was a wonderful event. And actually, because uh, Mason was on the senior trip, I got to present... Uh, her scholarship to her mother and father, um, Sarah and Steve, which was really nice. And they gave a nice acceptance speech too. It was wonderful. Um, 
Okay, so a lot of my things have been checked off my list because they've been covered already. Uh, I will be attending a JMT retreat coming up uh, next week on June 1st and 2nd. That's down at Ellicottville with all the superintendents in Western New York. Uh, pretty valuable event. Um, I have had a couple students come to me, uh, two different groups of students come and talk about wanting to plant trees on campus. We kind of said that it's up to the board. It's the board school district. Um, I, I said, I don't think the board would have a problem with it, provided that you talk with Scott Christ and make sure that the trees are number one, not gonna put undue burden on our building and grounds folks and that they're appropriate trees to have on school property. So if it's okay with you, I'll tell Scott to go ahead with that with both groups. Um, there's a middle school and a high school group. Um, we have posted for somebody's job, some school business official's job, uh, as Christine is leaving us to, you know, have expand her career into a, a larger district in Hamburg. So I do want to wish you all the best, Christine. And uh, but we are posting that, and hopefully we'll be able to find a candidate. We won't be able to find another Christine, but we'll do the best we can do. And then we have a couple of upcoming events I wanted to remind you about. Our goal setting workshop at the high school library is on Monday, um, June the fifth, from four till eight p.m. Let me know if you're going to attend that because we've got the, the uh, gentleman coming in. Jamie is coming in to work with us that day. So you can let me know that. That'd be great. Um, on the 6th, the next day is going to be moving up to the high school. And on the 7th at 8 a.m., uh, I'll be joining Jason going to the Ormsby CTE Senior Recognition at, at uh, East Florida High School. And that evening will be the, the high school spring concert. So I want to make you aware of those those events, put them on your calendar. And that's all I have, unless uh, there's anything you have for me. No, I don't think so. Great, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next is discussion items, uh, 8B, approval of the 23-24 board meeting dates. Uh, resolved that the Board of Education approved the attached 2023-2024 Board of Education meeting dates. Can I have a motion? Second. So moved, Bonnie. And a second? Second, Andrew. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Any, Aye. any opposed? <clears throat> motion carried five to zero. Resolved that the Board of Education approved the 2023 internal <laughs> internal audit performed by Lundsberg, Lumsden McCormick, LLP, as attached. Can I have a motion? And a second? Second, Russell. Any questions on this at all? All in favor? Any of the all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried five to zero. Resolved that the Holland Central School District Board of Education approves the amended instructional calendar for the 2023-2024 per attached. Can I have a motion? So, so moved, Russell. And a second? Second. Any questions then? Any comments? There was one change. We had to change two of the day's color. <laughs> the 25th originally on there, December 25th was red. No, 26th. 26th, yeah, sorry. 26th was red and the 22nd was yellow. And actually, it had to be the other way to match our, our actual calendar. So now 22nd is red and the 26th is yellow. Color is important. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carried five to zero. Resolved that the Board of Education of Holland Central Dis Holland Central School District hereby agrees to enter into the attached contract with Erie One BOCES for a three-year period commencing on or about June 2nd, 2023, to authorize the Western New York Regional Information Center to furnish certain computer services to the district pers pursuant to Education Law 1950. For the amount not to exceed $205,252.20 and authorizes 36 monthly payments to, to be made to Erie One BOCES in the amount not to exceed $5,701.45 per month. Be it res 
be it further resolved that the Board of Education of Holland Central School District hereby authorizes the board president or district clerk to execute the contract on behalf of the district. Can I have a motion? And a second? Second, Andrew. Any questions on that? This is a standard. Uh, yes, a three year IPA. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried mm -hmm. by the zero. Resolved that the Board of Education approves and accepts Kirk Fuel for the purchase of both diesel and gasoline as this vendor submitted the lowest responsible bid to the BOCES bid process as required by New York State Education Law, effective January 1, 2023 through December 31st, 2023. And I have a motion. So moved, Bobby. And a second. Second, Russ. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried five to zero. Uh, approval of health and welfare benefits for Buffalo City School District three dis three students at a cost of one thousand one hundred thirteen dollars and sixty nine cents per student for a total cost of three thousand three hundred forty one dollars and seven cents. Can I have a motion? So moved, Bobby. And a second. Second, Andrew. Standard um, thing. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried five to zero. Many reports, NISBA, not to use anything. Uh, policy. Yeah. Sorry, did miss donations. Um, we got a couple donations. One is a foosball table for the middle middle school indoor recess and Crosby's for breakfast pizza for staff appreciation speak. Recognize those who donated. Policy. Policy hasn't met since the last one. Um, negotiations. Uh, we haven't met. Um, Ball of Honor, no. Nope. Transportation, nothing new. Smart school, we're in the same holding still pattern. Waiting. Still waiting for money. Uh, finance and audit, we haven't met. Uh, facilities, we did meet today. Um, had a good meeting of the current projects moving along pretty well. Um, tentatively, we've got some good news that the project's on schedule back uh, on schedule. Um, I did circulate uh, around there's minutes from the meeting. We just got to kind of keep an eye out on the, the next project. Um, there's some items on there. Just take a take a peek over them and items that we want to include in the, the next project, which is probably not going to go out to the voters until December of 2024, possibly May. I doubt that um, I don't I don't think it'll be ready in time to go out to the voters until by May, I think it'll probably be a December vote, uh, but take a look in, in those minutes. I cover about everything, facilities. Capital outlay. Uh, capital outlay. We're gonna do the elementary doors. Yeah, we're doing the elementary doors, correct. Um, so Scott's gonna work with uh, the architect to get some troublesome doors. Uh, we could have a door project in and of itself, uh, <laughs> probably. We we definitely could. So, uh, upcoming information activities, upcoming meetings, second privilege of four. Anything? Uh, Any questions? Board of Education discussion of uh, discussion of privilege of the floor topics or roundtable. Um, and anything, Russ? Oh, I forgot to ask him this. Did we finish up the window treatments? So the um, middle school and the high school are done and the elementary school will, because we didn't have enough money in the um, budget that you, so we get money back from the state up to, and we had 20,000 earmarked for this year. So those two buildings got done with the 20,000 elementary will start right July 1 and then that will get done. 
um, they're, well, they just have to just, I think, do the edges, but all of the film is on all of the first floor windows and doors. You want to elaborate a little bit because I don't think it's talked amazing. About it. If you yeah. saw the video, so what this 3M film does is put on the um, inside of the window and it it adheres to the window. And while a bullet would still go through, you could take an axe, a baseball bat, and it'd be like your car windshield. Just like it just gives police so much more time to um, get on the scene. Uh, um, it, it shows a guy with a sledgehammer wailing away at the window and it, it will not, not come loose from the door. The yeah. glass is broken, but it will not allow access. So it can't get in. And so that's been on all of the first floor windows in and the door three building. Yeah. This point. And doors. So I had I met with um at an ASBO event, Tony Olivo, who is um he owns a private investigative firm in Orchard Park and he has a second location in Florida. But he used to be a U.S. Marshal and FBI agent. And I talked to him about our three quotes. And he said, that's the one you want, the one that we got. He goes, there's only one better and you can't afford it. Uh, <laughs> so I was very happy. He's done safety audits for schools, like in the area. So I was glad to get that second, you know, affirmation of how good this product is. And it has a 14-year warranty. That's great. No tape. You can't put tape on. You can't put tape on. <laughs> and you have to be careful how you clean the um, film, like it, you know, not strong chemicals, ammonia straight on or anything you like can't that. Use it. But, <laughs> right, but you gotta use green cleaning anyway. But yeah. Uh, coming meetings, second privilege of the floor, anything? Yeah. Oh, that was up to Board of Education discussion. Uh, anything, Kelly? Uh, Andrew, anything? This is a point where you can just uh, make a comment, <laughs> things that are on your mind or or discussion? Nothing yet. Okay. <laughs> there will be. <laughs> Bonnie, anything? Nope, nothing. I don't have anything either. Uh, well, adjourn to, uh, can I have a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss the purposes of, for the purposes of discussing negotiations and CBA cases uh, at 7.09 p.m. Can I have a motion? So moved, Russ. And a second? Second, Bonnie. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried five to zero.